What's up, guys? I'm here today to tell you why you suck at a request. The good news is I'm also going to tell you how to get better. And once you see the pattern of thinking here, you'll see that these are really just fundamentals of how to think about games in general. All right. So the first reason why you suck at EverQuest is that you don't understand how to manage resources or how to interpret high versus low value actions in the game. EQ is a game of resource management. So your health is a resource, your mana is a resource, your time is a resource. One of the worst offenses that I usually see are players that just refuse to use their mana bar. If you're a healer and your mana isn't being drained from healing alone, you should probably be contributing something else to your group. Usually damage, but sometimes you could even be pulling. We'll talk about this later. If you're a caster and you find yourself at full mana, you aren't casting enough spells. You need to cast more spells that do damage. It's as simple as that. The problem in these scenarios sometimes can be that pulls are just too slow. If so, you should be volunteering to pull. You pulling twice the mobs that your inadequate puller is bringing in is going to bring vastly more value to the group than you just sitting there on a full mana bar. But what about on the opposite end? What if you find yourself running out of mana? Well, start considering what actions you're taking. Are you a level 12 shaman that insists on buffing the entire group with feet like cat and snakeskin? This is a low value action. These buffs are not going to help you kill faster or save significant mana in the form of the healing that the targets in your group require. Instead, save that buffing mana so that you can continue to heal your group so that they can kill for longer without metting or it may even enable you to begin contributing damage to the group. Let's say you're in a group that's pulling single mobs into camp. Let's say that they die within 10 seconds. Are you a necro that's casting funeral pyre on these mobs? This is a super low value action. Your dot is only taking one time in those 10 seconds for 310 damage, making the damage per mana and the DPS extremely low. Instead, you should consider casting, let's say, touch of night twice and that will do 1400 damage. This is just an example. This example also works for debuffing classes as well. Don't waste mana slowing mobs that die so quickly that they don't pay for their cost. This is a low value action. Instead, consider contributing a nuke or some form of damage. The TLDR here is make sure you're converting your available resources into things that will help your group either kill faster or kill for longer without resting. Another reason why you suck at EQ is that you have no idea how a group should really be pulling mobs. As we just talked about, EQ is a game of resource management. And if your group has adequate resources to maximize experience, you should always be fighting a mob. And so your puller should pull in such a way that there is always a mob in camp. One of the worst offenses that I see in this category is when groups expect a tank to pull. This is always the worst option. If the tank is pulling, you can't always have a mob in camp and always be fighting. Instead, there are mandatory gaps where the tank goes to get mobs. So the ideal puller really is someone who is contributing the least to the group's ability to kill mobs and or the one that loses the least impact by leaving camp. This can vary from group to group. But the funny thing is that classes that groups traditionally try to force into pulling roles are some of the worst choices, namely monks and bards. Here's the deal. These days in XP groups, you're almost never splitting a camp via FD or Fade. It's all about pulling large quantities of mobs into camp quickly. And adds are generally a non-issue. Monks are generally going to be the highest DPS class you can have in your group. So making them leave camp constantly is one of the worst decisions you can make. It'll just slow down your rate of XP. Bards are buffing the entire group with haste, attack, mana regen, and sometimes more depending on the expansion. Again, this makes your entire group kill faster while they're in camp. Instead, think about classes that are providing lower value to the group, or a class that loses less by leaving camp. Classes like enchanters, necros, and druids come to mind as great examples here. Enchanters aren't needed much for CC these days, and their DPS is coming mostly from a charm pet. So they're a great candidate to go out and pull mobs. They lose next to nothing for doing so, and they can even use their CC to split or stagger mobs if really needed. 
Necros have insane mana regen with Lich, so they're less reliant on needing to sit and med than like a wizard for example. They're also able to like dot a mob and then send their pet in before leaving camp, allowing them to do damage while being absent from the group. Again, an example of a class that loses less value while pulling. If you have a druid in your group, what role are they playing? Are they healing or are they DPSing? If they're healing, are you fighting mobs that are threatening enough that they really need to be in camp spamming heals constantly? If not, maybe they could be a great puller candidate and even stagger large pulls in with snare or root. If they're in a DPS role, they're probably your lowest DPS in the group and therefore would lose the least by pulling. Not to mention, like Necros, they also have the opportunity to dot before leaving camp. So again, this is all comes back to resource management. You're managing the DPS in your group and how you structure it. The person that is contributing the least amount of DPS or, or is the least necessary to be in the camp while a mob is there is going to be the best candidate to leave camp and go and pull. So let's stop making bards and monks the de facto pullers. We should think a little bit harder about who we have in our group to pull and not just automatically assume, oh, I'm this class, so there's no way I can pull. All right, this is a simple one, but it's one that drives me crazy. You have no situational awareness and or you play in first person. Knowledge is power. This is no secret. Being able to see what is going on around you allows you to anticipate when an event is going to impact your group or raid. The best way to do this is simply to be in third person, constantly rotating your camera to be aware of the things that are happening around you. This could be a lot of things. It could just be seeing a patrolling mob that is about to path into your group, seeing an opposing group encroaching in on your space, seeing what actions a group or raid member is taking out of your direct field of view, seeing a train that is coming before it can run you over, seeing the incoming pull coming into camp from your puller. All of these are events that convey some sort of information that can inform your actions in a reactionary or anticipatory way. Having this information and being able to act on it will just make you a better player, there's no question. So zoom your camera out, spin around, be attentive, and know what's going on around you. If you don't know the capabilities of other classes, you probably suck at EQ. There's two big problems with this. One, you don't know the tools that you have in your toolbox, so you can't deploy them to solve problems. Two, you don't have the knowledge to demand more of your group or raid when classes aren't playing to their full potential. So I'm just going to throw out a few examples here, and these are by no means the greatest secrets of EverQuest. Just some things to ponder and ask yourself next time you find yourself in some of these situations. Could XYZ class have helped us out here? Could they have done more? Is the Necro in your group casting the Mind Rack spell line? The first version of this spell is worth 300 mana to everyone in the group every minute. That's 18,000 mana per hour starting in Lucklin. This is a huge uptime boost to a group of spellcasters or any group where mana is a bottleneck to pull speed. If your necro isn't casting this spell, you should probably ask them to. Don't forget that wizard's snare line is an AE. Is there a wipe threatening pull coming into your camp with no measures? Could the wizard have AE snared and kited the adds to save the pull? Wizards also have a stun DD. Are you fighting mobs that complete heal? Put your wizard on stun duty. Druids have an animal charm line as well as a pet haste buff and an animal only magic resist debuff. Are you fighting in an area with animals? You should ask your druid to charm. Do you really need to split a tough camp but don't have an FD class with you? Well, do you have a mage? All of the hero wipes aggro of the person that gets summoned. So with some coordination, you can use it as a way to split pull just like a monk. Or you could even save a puller who's pulled too many mobs and bring them safely back to camp. Again, these are just a few probably obvious, but also probably underused abilities of classes that just aren't typically thought of for their utility. Once you know what all classes are capable of, you can start constructing creative solutions to various problems that you'll face in EverQuest. All right, so that's why you suck at EverQuest, but hopefully now you know how to fix it. I had a few more items on my list that didn't quite make the cut. What do you think? Does this need a part two? What other common issues do you guys see out there? That's all I got for now, so I'll see you guys in the next one.